Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is October 16th, 2018. It's a Tuesday, and this is episode 24. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How are you guys doing? It has finally become autumn here, and it's too chilly today for me to record in the park. Um, if it were, it's high 40s, low 50s right now, I think. And if it were sunny, it would be okay, but it's a little bit overcast. Um, so we are in my very favorite spot in my house right now, which is my bed. And uh, if we were, you know, hanging out in real life at my house, we would probably be hanging out on my bed unless that freaked you out because this is where I hang out. This is where all of my friends have always hung out is in this space. So yeah, I mean, I have a living room, but I like to hang out on my bed. And when I go over to my best friend's house, we also hang out on her bed. We're just bed people. Some people are. Um, isn't this headboard beautiful? My dad gave this to me when I was in middle school or high school. I love it. It's very heavy and uh, very beautiful. So anyway, let's talk about podcasty crafty things. The Deja Vu Along goes through the end of this month. So anything that you are making that you have made before, so revisiting a pattern, that sort of thing, that counts. There are some finishes in the finished object thread. Not a ton though. So there are two prizes so far. A skein of yarn from Cattails Yarn and the option for me to make you something are up for grabs. Um, or a pattern prize if neither of those interest you. And uh, yeah, so you have a pretty good chance if you go and enter something over there. Um, I am going to do Finisher Frog in November and December. I do it every year and I love it because it gives, it's a, it's a way to clear off needles and hooks and spindles and everything to start fresh for the new year. So that'll be starting November 1st and going through December 31st. All right, so finished objects. Let's get into it. I have two. It's been two weeks since I've seen you, and um, I was almost finished with this hat. I think this down, this marker down here was where I was at last time I podcasted, and this was probably just a daily stitch marker, but I left both in because I can't remember. Um, I have the crown decreases fixed in the pattern. This is try time. It's my design. I reworked the crown, um, decreases to make the, to make it less confusing. So I have to, and I formatted a charted version. Um, the previous version of this hat was only a written instructions. So now it's charted and I'm having it looked over. And then I just have to format the written instructions and this will be um, updated on Ravelry. This light, I don't think you can see the cable texture. No, I'm a kind of, I guess a little bit. So it has three cables running up in a panel, texture stitches in between, texture stitches all over the body, and the yarn that I used for this is Tosh Mo Light. It has mohair content, although I had the tag a couple days ago and now I don't know where it is again. So I don't know what the content, the exact um, mohair content is, but I took a poll on Instagram and this hat will be going to my mom and not staying with me because I think you can tell it's just not a super flattering color for me, but my mom, I think it'll look nice on. Um, I just pulled a button out of my button stash because I have a pretty, I mean, it's small. I have a small button stash, but it has a hundred or so buttons for me to pull from. 
So, as far as button stashes go, like, it's small, but it does what I need it to do. Um, and I, I don't know where this button was. I don't think I bought it, though. I think it's probably a rescue from a coat or something that I changed buttons out of. And then the exciting big finish is I finished the Helio Shawl by Elise Crochet Designs. It's a just, Justine Wally pattern. And this is what it looks like. It's not blocked because it's a sample and I'm going to be sending it in the mail. So Shelby of Bayou City Yarn Company is going to block it when she gets it. But isn't it lovely? Let's see. Get a little closer. So yes, you can see it's got... Um, ridge details. There you go. That's really good. Okay, so it's got ridge details. Um, there are, if you're interested in making this pattern, it is crochet. It is not a beginner pattern. Um, it's not, but I would say, okay, it's not a beginner beginner pattern, but an adventure adventurous beginner, I think you could handle this. It uses chain stitches, double crochet, single crochet, and half double crochet. Um, the trickiest part for me <laughs> was making sure that I counted accurately because, as you know, I do a lot of my crafting while I do other things, and counting to 103 is not something I can do in a straight working it straight if I'm not paying attention, which is fine. I usually just crochet a whole bunch and then count and then crochet what else I need. Um, same with knitting when I have to count like that. So yeah, the blue is Bayou City Yarn Company in Oil Spill and the yellow is Bayou City Yarn Company in Lemoncello. And if you will bear with me for a moment, I believe I have a Bayou City Yarn Company tag here. Yes. So this is what the tag looks like. Shelby is excellent to work with. And um, there is information. She is on her own website is BayouCityYarnCo.com. You can find her through Ravelry too. So yeah, I love this yarn. It was so nice to work with. It's a 75-25 um, two-ply sock yarn. So I would use it for my own socks, but not necessarily for socks for someone who is super hard on their socks. I have a couple ends yet to clip, it looks like. They're all woven in, they're just not clipped yet. So I am, part of the reason why I'm recording right now is because I am planning on going to the post office today in amidst other errands. So I want to get this out to Shelby, but I wanted to show you. I think it is absolutely beautiful, totally worth the effort, and it didn't take me extremely long. I think I finished this on the 12th, maybe, and I got the yarn on the 1st. I did dedicate a decent portion of my crafting time every day to working on it, but um, still, it didn't take overly long, and the result is very, very beautiful. Um, I used a size F hook, which is just a, like 0.25 millimeters smaller than the recommended hook size in the pattern. My hair is driving me crazy. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's slightly smaller, but I did check gauge because it's a sample project. I didn't want to run out of yarn. Um, and so the F hook got me gauge. Sample projects are really the only projects that I really, really swatch for, except for sweaters. I just tied my hair into a knot in case you were wondering what was going on. Doesn't seem like a very stable one, but good enough for now. And then I don't usually talk about half objects in finished objects, but I'm going to talk about this one if I can find it um, in finished objects. No, nope, maybe I won't. Maybe I have misplaced it in this pile of blanket. <laughs> oh, and this, I would totally edit this out if I were, you know, editing, but I'm not. Okay, so my half object that I am not showing you right now, but maybe 
later it will come to me, is the first Perfect Sock from Regia. I finished the first one, and I can't remember if I talked about it here or just on Instagram, the possibility that I might run out of yarn and therefore need to um, use a different colorway or a different yarn altogether to finish the sock, but I didn't have to. The, um, the patterning stopped on this particular sock. It's a knit on size one, 72 stitch sock. I normally knit my socks on one uh, US one 2.25 millimeter needles using 60 stitches. So I wasn't sure about how much this, uh, this man sock was going to take. And on the sock itself, the patterning stops about halfway down the foot, but then there was plenty of the contrast color still in the attached to the ball to get me all the way through the toe. So that's good. And like I said, I, I had the sock. It's somewhere in this area, but I can't find it right this second. So hopefully I'll show that to you later in this recording. Um, anything else about that sock? No, I don't think so. It's just a vanilla sock. It's for car knitting and those unexpected moments when I don't take knitting and then I need knitting. It just lives in my car for that. I have actually started, um, not the second sock to that sock. I started a different sock from a different pair. I don't usually do that. I usually cast on second socks immediately after, but that second sock has to be done by Christmas anyway. However, I just wanted a faster finish for my car knitting. I know that's ridiculous. Like, who cares? Who times it? But my sister picked up some yarn last week for me that had red in it because I've had a request for socks with red in them and I didn't have any red sock yarn in my stash. So she picked it up for me and I have cast on that sock, but I'm doing contrast heel toes cuffs. So I'm working on the heel. Nope, not the heel. I'm working on the cuff. It's in my car. It's not very interesting. It's just gray Premier Serenity sock uh, yarn. It's the colorway charcoal. Okay. Other works in progress. So I'm still working on this design hat using Fiber, Min Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Overlook colorway. And I don't remember. I think this is called Natural or something. Isn't that pretty? I'm super in love with how this hat is knitting up. Um, and I'll be looking for testers soon. Let's say the end of October. This should be done. I, since I have seen you, I have ripped it out at least once completely, but I've probably ripped out a little bit here and there. I know that I've ripped back four times designing this hat. It's part of the process. You try something, it doesn't work, or it doesn't work how you thought it would in your brain. Rip it out. Not a big deal. So now I'm in love with it. I think it's working up so beautifully. I am excited for people to see it and test knit it. I am half, a little more than halfway up the body of the hat before I get to the crown decreases. And I knit this over the past two days. Yesterday I didn't knit very much at all, but on Sunday I knit, well, I'll just show you. From Sunday I knit from here to here, and then yesterday I knit from here to there. So it works up pretty quick. And I am hoping that this will be finished next week on the podcast, um, but definitely by the end of the month so that I can get it out to test knitters. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. I love these colors. Um, I have been told that it looks like a Totoro, <laughs> which just makes me even happier because I love Totoro. It's a Studio Ghibli movie. It's a kid's movie. It's my favorite from when I was little. So, oh, I love the, the way the texture is working up. I love the panel. I just love everything about this hat. It makes me super happy and hopefully it will make other people super happy too. And because I'm showing tags today when I can, let me show you the tag for Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And this is the Overlook colorway, the three stripe. So... That's, uh, that's pretty exciting. It's a good, 
good work being accomplished on this. I was so, I had worked, you know, 30 rounds or something, and then I didn't like the way the panel was working up. So I tried to drop down just the panel because I am pretty accomplished at just dropping down stitches and working them back up. But because it's intarsia, it was just, I messed up the tension at one point and it, I couldn't recover from it. So I had to rip out the whole thing back to the brim, but now it's going fine. And, uh, I am already looking toward my next design hat, which I kind of want to talk about now just for a second, because I have a question about it. So this is what it's going to be. And it's going to be, um, I'm hoping it's going to be a color work hat, color work ish. I'm thinking mosaic knitting, but I'm not sure. So these two are going to go together and they're Nooch, Nooch fiber, which, who, you know, I love it's the Midtown Sock 7525, and this one is Diaphanous Wing, and this one is The Deeds Were Done and Done Again. I think they're going to be fabulous together, but my question is, I'm not going to cast this on right away, but I kind of think that I might cast it on in the next week or so, just to, you know, it's looking at the colors is giving me so much joy that, uh... I kind of want to. So I'm doing a color work hat and I'm not sure what type of brim I should do. I'm kind of leaning toward a folded brim. What do you guys think? Do you guys like a folded brim? Because I, and if you like the folded brim idea, I'm kind of thinking of having this be the, um, the inner band. So folded brim has two, it's double thick on the brim. And I just happened to do this tri tie in that way. It's not how it's written in the pattern, but since this has mohair content and sensitive skin, I thought I would try to do a folded brim to see if it would work for me, but, and it does. I can wear this without it being itchy. It's just not good colors for me. So anyway, it has the outside brim and then the inside brim. And as you can see, I used a different yarn here. So I'm thinking of doing the inside brim in this and then doing the outside brim in this and then going into the color work part of the hat. What do you think? Yes? No? Um, let's talk hat needles for a second. I did the tri tying on US 1 for the brim and US 3 for the top for the body of the hat and then for my design hat I used one US1 one for the brim but US2 for the body of the hat because I want this to be a little bit of a tighter fitting hat and because it has lace I want it to um I want it to be tighter so it can stretch more um, I don't know exactly what needles I'll use for this hat. It will be, there will be swatching involved, but what do you guys think about that brim idea? And if you don't like a folded brim, what do you, what do you like for color work? Um, one by one twisted rib, two by two rib, some other random rib. Let me know what you think. I don't really go with, um, irregular ribbing unless I'm doing a cable pattern and the irregular ribbing works into the cable nicely. So that's probably not the way I'll go with it, but let me know what you think on that. I have also been working on the zipper lexicon socks and I have made it to the heel. So this is what it looks like. It is an entrelac um, modular... I mean, I guess that's pretty self-explanatory with entrelac, but a, uh, it's a very interesting technique-wise sock, and um, it's a paid-for pattern. I think it's $7 US. Totally worth it. There's like 15 pages of instructions. Don't be intimidated. They're really, really clear. There's picture tutorials. Kirsten Hall does a great, great job. I love these socks. I think they're so cool looking, especially for heavily variegated yarns. 
I love this. This is probably my go-to for heavy, heavily variegated yarns. Look at how cool those hexagons look. So I'm going to start the heel. Um, the toe you go back and do later. So I'm going to do the heel, but I am going to do the heel not in the main body yarn, which is Manos. I think it's Manos. I haven't actually looked at the tag in a while, so let's go ahead and do that. Yes, Manos del Uruguay Alegria in, in the colorway Locura Fluro? I don't know. I just made that up. Um, I didn't just make that up. I just made that pronunciation up. But it's super bright and colorful. I am going to work. I'm making these for my sister and she wants them as tall as they can be, which is why did I say I'm doing a contrast heel? I'm doing a contrast heel, toe, and cuff. I'm going to use just black Premier Serenity sock yarn um, for that. I am going to knit this first sock. Um, I think I'm going to do four hexagon tiers on the leg and then set the first sock aside and I mean do the toe but then set it aside before I put on the cuff just to see how much I have left and then work the other sock from the inside of the cake the same way and see if I can do a fifth tier on each sock. I don't think I'm going to have enough yarn for that but we'll see. I'm going to make them as tall as I can for her. I am working these a little bit differently than I normally work socks. I'm actually working them on a US size zero, er, yes, US size zero, which is a 2.0 millimeter needle. Uh, because I'm finding that my gauge has loosened up a little bit on sock knitting and I want to try knitting on zeros just to see um, what the fabric is like, if it makes it more work than it's worth, that sort of thing. But here's the first sock and next time it will definitely have the heel in because this is my knit group knitting right now and I am using in case you're wondering knitters pride carbons um this is the first time I've used these needles is in this project and this is the um this is what my local yarn shop city knits stocks so I I've heard a lot of people talk about how much they love the needles. There is a small um, area where it joins. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't catch on my knitting at all. And as far as double pointed needles go, they're fine. They're not like the most spectacular double pointed needles I've ever used. They're not as sharp as Haya Haya Sharps, of course. Um, but they're pretty good. They're serviceable. I wouldn't be upset if I had to buy more of these particular needles. Do you want to see my bags? So bad. I'm, I'm sure you've seen them as I've been working on them. Fates Thread, Knit One Crochet 2, and then those are the only two project bags I have in my lap. I am also working on a Lally Lala pattern, which, um, it's, her name is Lydia Tresselt, and I am sort of making Rocco the raccoon. I say sort of because I had a request for a wolf. She doesn't have a wolf, but I really wanted to make that style of doll. So I'm going to um, hack the pattern a little, make the ears pointier, do some sort of tufting on the tail... I have started with the easy part, which is crocheted in white. This is just the very beginning of the head. The head and the hands will be done in white because it is, excuse me, what I have. This is uh, wool-like loops and threads. It's the Michaels store brand. It's 75 acrylic 25 nylon or 85 15 something like that it's an acrylic nylon fingering weight yarn that I picked up when everybody was picking up this yarn when it was new um, I have three balls why did I think I needed three balls of this 
I know why I thought I needed it. I was going to use it as um, a contrast color in a color work project, and then I didn't end up doing that color work project. So I have three balls of this that I've been working away slowly at this first one. And then <sighs> the rest of the wolf is going to be black. Yeah, I'm going to be crocheting a... If you get the measurements that the pattern gets, a 17-inch doll out of black fingering weight yarn using a USB-1 2.25 millimeter hook. It will be okay, and it will be lovely. And if it's not okay and not lovely, I will just uh, melt it. I was going to say burn it, but guess melt it. It'll be okay. Her patterns, <clears throat> excuse me, are super well written and they turn out lovely. I love following her instructions. They're so, so cute. So it will be great if I can actually bring myself to work on it. The other thing that I've been sort of working on is I've sort of been spinning on the Carnival Bears I said at the beginning of the month I want to do, to do 15 minutes a day, and I've not been doing that. I've done probably four days so far this month. That's only a quarter. I really want this to be finished by the end of the month. There's no reason why this braid of fiber cannot be finished by the end of this month. Do you remember when I used to do two-ply two fingering weight yarns? from four, do four ounces in one month, and that was a thing that I just did on my spindles? I don't even have to ply this. I just want the single from this first braid because I have two braids. And I'm going to do all of the singles first and then ply on my wheel. What is taking me so long? I don't know. I don't know. I want to spin, but I'm also like involved in my knitting and confession time. I am obsessed with the game Best Fiends and it is sucking way too many of my spare minutes out of the day. It is what it is. Okay, I only have one last thing to talk to you guys about. And if for some reason, Josh, you are watching, I feel like you're probably not, which is totally fine and totally cool because, you know, busy and life and stuff. But if for some reason you are, go away. I love you, but don't ruin Christmas. I'm going to give him a second just in case he's, you know, knitting furiously on his newest shawl design and needs a moment to get to the end of the row before he can turn off the podcast. Okay, that's been your time, Josh. If you're still here, you're ruining Christmas, and I hope you feel terrible about it. So I talked about this, I can't remember if it was on a podcast or on a vlog or something, I think it was on a vlog, probably in May, and I showed you guys the blanket that I am making Josh for Christmas because I'm a crazy person. So I'm going to give you an update on what it looks like. I am doing blocks. So this is the block that I'm currently working on, and I need to be doing four squares a day if I want it finished by the 1st of December so that I can send it out. I, I was so good about it for months. And then this month, just again, just no, I haven't been doing my four blocks a day. So it's probably more like four and a half blocks a day now that I need to do in order to get it done by then. But I'm running into a little bit of an issue wherein I have used almost, almost my entire scrap yarn collection in this blanket. Not all of it. My I still have leftovers of yarn, but I really don't want to have a ton of doubles in this blanket square-wise, and so I've gone through everything once already, almost. I should just get over it, right? It's okay to reuse yarns again. Tell me that it's fine to reuse the yarns again because they won't be in the same place and it'll be fine. And if the square has, or if the blanket has two of each square, 
it's just as good as if they're all original colors, right? I'm just being crazy. I'm just giving myself more to deal with that I don't need to deal with, correct? Okay, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to let it go and not think that every square has to be unique. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I'm going to try though so that I can get this blanket finished so that it can be Christmas gift this year because I've been working on this for a very long time. I started it back when I lived in Kentucky and I did not have a goal end date for it. But at the beginning of this year, I said it was the year of the blanket and it's the year of the blanket. I just need this blanket to not be hanging over my head anymore. I love it. It's amazing. But I want to start a new <laughs> scrap yarn blanket because I don't have enough already. And this is sucking up a lot of my scrap yarn blanket knitting time. And I would like to put in um, time on my other blankets. Sucking up in a good way. Like I'm not, I have no negative feelings toward this blanket. I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing when it's done. But I want it to be done this year. Because also, um, I didn't get Josh a wedding present. And the reason I'm making this particular blanket for Josh is because he has been an admirer of my blankets for a very long time. And it's just not a thing he'll ever make for himself. He just won't, which is fine. I won't ever make myself a sock head hat. I just won't which is fine. Haley makes them for me because she's amazing. But I enjoy the process of making mitered square blankets. I don't know why I enjoy the process of making mitered square blankets, because I don't enjoy the process of much mindless crafting. I think it's just because you get to play with color and it's such a quick finish. I don't know. I love it. So this is my current block. Let me show you where I am at on the blanket. Oh, pulling out a needle. Oh, well, I'll pick up stitches after the podcast. Who cares? So I decided that I would do 20, 36 square blocks. So you can do the math on that to figure out how many squares I'm making of this. And I am putting them together in um, four, four columns by five rows. And each square has a border. And then I am grafting the squares together and on the edge doing a border. So this side is done. It has its border. Um, what's going on here? Oh, apparently I just need to graft these stitches together. Must not have had a needle when I finished knitting this section. So it's garter stitch border. And uh, I know you can see where the line is. I'm hoping that blocks out. I think it will. I think it should be fine once I block it. Um, and then I do a little mitered square in between the sides. And it's bound off with I-cord because I-cord looks nice and it's a edging that Josh likes. So I have all of the border squares, I'm not going to show you all of them, but all of the border squares are on and I only have one side left to finish knitting the border. However, that leaves me six blocks that I need to finish in the next month and a half. Totally doable if I do my squares. And then I will seam them in. And they're, all these live stitches are being held on knitting needles. And the reason I did it this way is because I did not, leaving the blocks just to sew in, I did not want to finish piecing the blanket and then have to do all of the border at the end because I would procrastinate on other things and then it wouldn't get done by Christmas. So grafting, while it does take time, is not something that I dislike so I don't mind having to graft in the squares. Um, and that's something that I can do as I'm knitting on other squares. And then once the final 
block is grafted in, it's finished and I can just wash it and send it. So that's my thought process behind it. I think it is going to be so cozy and lovely for Josh and his husband and I hope they love it. They better love it. But yeah, I am super excited to have this finished by Christmas. I will definitely have it on Instagram after Christmas. Um, maybe I'll show it on the podcast before I send it. I don't know. But send me good vibes and tell me that it's okay to have multiples of the same yarn in the blanket and that he won't even notice. Right? That'll be fine. I don't need unique squares. Get over it, Heather. It's fine. All right. You guys are right. I'm going to listen. I'm going to finish going through my unique yarns and then... No. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to start working with some of the older yarns and mix in some of the new unique yarns so that I'm not, so that there is more variety in square placement and things. Okay, you guys talked me into it. You guys are the winners. I hope you made something fantastic with your six and string and I will try to be back next week. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, if you have any comments, please put them in the comments below and hit like, subscribe, hit the little bell button if you want to know when I post podcasts because they're not as regular as they used to be. I will see you hopefully next week. Bye!